Well, good morning. Welcome to Mill City Church. We're so glad that you guys have joined us. Whether it's your first time here or, or you've been coming regularly, we're happy to have you. We're happy to be worshiping with you. It's so great that we get to, to join together. I know we're not in the same room right now necessarily, but we get to join together still, and there's something special about that. I know on any given Sunday, we could be coming in from busy weeks. Maybe the kids were just jumping on the couch and going crazy, and you're trying to find time to uh, tune in right now, or it's just been a stressful week, or maybe maybe you're on top of the world. It's been a phenomenal week. Either way, right now, what we're getting ready to do is worship God, the one and only true God and living God. So before we start singing, before we enter in time of prayer and, and studying God's word, let's just take a moment together, maybe like half a minute or so, and and let's just kind of settle our minds and, and focus our hearts as we prepare to worship, all right? God, this morning, help us to lift your name up high and your name alone. We bring everything that's uh, going on in our lives and we lay them at your feet now. You tune our hearts and our minds and our lips to sing your praise. We ask this in your name.
us from the past and will continue to do so. So come let us worship our King And come let us bow at His feet He has done great things what our Savior has done. See how his love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. We believe it this morning. And no oh, hero of heaven, you conquer the grave. You free every captive and break every chain. No oh, God have done great things so we dance in your freedom awake and alive oh jesus our savior your name lifted high oh god you have done great things he's god through every trial forevermore you have done great things yes you have and we know you will do it again for your promises yes and amen you will do great things cause God you do great things oh hero of heaven you conquer the grave, you free every captive and break every chain. No oh God, you have done great things. We dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high. Oh God, you have done great. Of it all, Hallelujah, God, unshakable, Hallelujah, you have done great things. So we sing now, Hallelujah, God, above it all. And break every chain, no oh God, you have done great things. So we dance in your freedom, awake and alive. Oh Jesus, our Savior, your name lifted high, oh God, you have done great things. You have done great things, oh God, you do great. Amen. It's so awesome singing with you guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to our live stream this morning. We're going to continue singing in just a minute, but before we do, let's go to the Lord in prayer. So bow your heads with me. God, you are so awesome. You do great things, and that's amazing. It's amazing that you are our God and that we can worship you together collectively as a body, that we can sing praises to you, that we can study your word, God. We just thank you for your goodness. We're so thankful. God, uh, I want to lift up all of our church members and for those who are watching um, this live stream, and we just want to pray for your uh, protection and safety over our lives, God. Um, with all that's been happening with the pandemic, God, I just pray that we would be safe um, from the virus 
And also, God, for those who have been affected, um, we pray for a speedy recovery, knowing that you are sovereign and that you are in control. So we pray that you would do these things. God, we also, we want to lift up our nation. With everything that's been happening over these past few months and even this past week, God, we pray for unity and we pray for peace in our nation, God. We pray that our government would have wisdom and that our nation would strive for peace and that we as Christians would demonstrate your love and your peace to our nation in this, in this time. God, we're also mindful of our missionaries that we support. We pray, God, that you would be drawing people to yourself and crossing their paths with our missionaries so that they would have a great gospel impact in their church and in their region. God, and we pray this boldly to you because we know that nothing is impossible for you. We know that you are a good and gracious God and you, you answer the prayers of your children and you listen to us, God. So we pray these things with confidence and with boldness and because we know who you are. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's continue to sing praises to our God. Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me A sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful And my song shall end Sweat drops of blood for mine. And he took my sins and my sorrows. He made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died. shall ever be how marvelous how wonderful in my Savior's love for me when with the ransom I at last shall see to be my joy through the ages to sing of his love for me we sing
shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. God shows his love in this, that while we were sinners, Christ died for us didn't end there either. He rose to life, bringing us with him. What gift of grace. You took our sin, you bore our shame, you rose to life, you defeated the grave. Love like this, the world has never known. took our sin, you bore our shame, you rose to life, you defeated the grave. Love like this, the world has never known. So on the altar of our praise, let there be no higher name. Let there be no higher name, Jesus, Son of God. You laid down your perfect life. You are the sacrifice, Jesus, Son of God. You are Jesus, Son of God. Be lifted higher than all you overcome. Your name be louder than any other song. There is no power that can come against your love. The cross was enough. The cross was enough. The cross was enough. enough. The cross was in the cross. The cross was enough. The cross was enough. The cross was enough. The cross was enough. God, thank you for Christ. Thank you for sending him to die on the cross on our behalf, but not just stop there, but to, to come back to life and to raise us up with him. We praise you, God. We thank you for this time of singing songs of praise to you. Would you fill our hearts and our minds and our souls with your word by your spirit? It's your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, church. If you have your Bibles with you, you can turn to Ephesians chapter 3. That's where we'll be this morning. Uh, Also, please make sure to download the listening guide from the link in the description below. 
so that you can follow along as we study the word this morning. So we talked last week about starting this year off strong and what it looks like to treasure God in your heart above all else. This week, we're going to continue that same conversation as we continue to recalibrate and set ourselves up for this new year. I want us to think about how it is that we're able to treasure God in our hearts above all else. Because when we think of truly treasuring God in the midst of our lives, it seems really hard. Actually, it seems impossible. None of us on our own would treasure God above all else. But the great news is we don't have to do it on our own. We don't have to muster up enough discipline and enough affection by our own strength. We have a God who is on our side, our own creator himself. And we need to learn to rely on him for everything, especially something as important as shaping our hearts to love him more than anything else. Which is why I believe that relying on God is a huge decision that we all need to make for this new year. This has massive implications for our lives. And one of the best ways we can rely on God is through prayer. So this leads us to our second foundational question for 2021. And you'll see this in your notes. Would this be a year of faithful prayer in your life? Would this be a year of faithful prayer in your life? I can guarantee you that it is 100% impossible to treasure God above all else without prayer. Prayer is the avenue through which our hearts can treasure God. And not because our prayers are supremely holy, but because our prayers move God to shape our hearts to look more like his. But let's quickly define prayer so that we're all on the same page. Biblically speaking, prayer is communication with the Father through the Son by the Spirit. So we're engaging the Father in communication through Jesus by the work of the Holy Spirit in us. A good reference of this is actually in Ephesians 2.18, where Paul says, through Jesus we have access in one spirit to the Father. But no one just instinctively knows how to do this. We're not born knowing how to pray. If you're a believer, think back to when you first believed. You didn't know how to pray, right? And if you're a new believer now, you might still be going through the process of learning. This is normal. Jesus taught his disciples how to pray. And even mature Christians who have been believers for decades need reminders on how to pray. If this wasn't the case, we wouldn't have passages like Ephesians 3 that we're about to read. And just to be clear, I'm not talking about eloquence here. I'm not saying that a mature Christian needs to have the most captivating and eloquent prayers. No. Jesus sharply warns his disciples about prayers that sound good to the listener, but don't come from the heart. Or a prayer that uses empty phrases that have no significance but might sound catchy. The point is our posture and our heart when we pray. That is what's important, and that's what needs to be taught and learned. So now that we've laid the foundation and asked ourselves this important question for the new year, let's look at what the text has to say about a life of faithful prayer. Ephesians 3, starting in verse 14, it says, For this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask or think, 
according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. There really is so much to say about this passage. It's so full and rich, and it teaches us a lot about prayer. And we can't unpack every single little detail about this passage this morning, but from the text, we can see at least three examples of faithful prayer to follow this year. And that's what we're going to focus on this morning. And the first that we see is this. Pray with reverence. Pray with reverence. One of my favorite names for God in Scripture is Abba. I love this so much because Abba is the Aramaic equivalent of Daddy. Like, just picture a little kid raising his hands up and crying out, Daddy. That's the picture the Bible paints for us. Scripture teaches us that we have been adopted as sons of God. This means that we can cry out to God and call him Abba. He's our father, our dad. We should feel so close to him in our hearts. But this closeness shouldn't take away our reverence for God. Paul gives us a great example here in the text. He knows his position before the Father, and he knows that he is adopted as a son. Yet, he's still reverent in his prayers. God is not our bro. He's not on the same level as us. I shouldn't say, what's up, God? How's it going? How are things managing the universe today? Chill? All right, cool. Talk to you later. Peace. Like, no, that would be a completely inappropriate and irreverent prayer. So what does this look like? How can we pray with reverence knowing that we are sons of God? Through the text, we can see a few different forms of reverence that Paul shows us. The first is this, pray with reverent humility. Pray with reverent humility. We see this in verse 14 when Paul says that he bows his knees before the Father. Notice his posture here. Paul is on his knees before the Father. This is a posture of reverent humility. He's not treating God as his equal here. He's clearly making this, the distinctions that God is the creator and he is the creation. If you're someone who doesn't regularly get on your knees when you set aside some time for intimate prayer, I would highly encourage you to do so. Get a nice prayer pillow, slide it right under your knees so that they don't get sore and you're good to go. This is such a great way to prepare your heart for prayer. When you start with reverent humility by getting on your knees and declaring with your actions that God is the king of kings, God is truly honored by this type of humility. But the action of kneeling isn't what makes this honoring to God. It honors him because it's a reflection of the state of our heart. We are so incredibly blessed to be able to communicate with God. The fact that he even cares to listen to us is so beautiful. Like the God and the creator of the entire universe listens to me when I speak to him. This is truly a humbling reality, and our hearts and our posture should reflect this. Now, I'm not for a moment suggesting that this is the only appropriate posture for prayer. There are many other postures that are appropriate, and a lot of them depend on the context that you're in. For example, you could be praying in a small group in someone's home, and you could all be sitting on the couch as you bow your heads. You could be praying in your car as you drive to work in the morning. I actually do this almost every day. And you could even be praying as you're walking through downtown Lowell or through your college campus. What's most important is the heart behind your posture. Are you approaching God with reverent humility or are you approaching God very casually without reverence? The second form of reverence Paul demonstrates is Pray with reverent dependence. Pray with reverent dependence. 
Paul getting on his knees is also evidence that he knows he is helpless without God, especially with what he's asking. He is praying that the Ephesians would have spiritual strength. He knows that apart from God, this is impossible and that they're helpless without God. He's demonstrating the dependence that he has for God to give spiritual strength to all who ask for it. God is a gracious God, and he gives generously to all his creation, to the just and to the unjust. Right? The sun shines, and the rain produces crops for the believer and the unbeliever. Many people take for granted the fact that God sustains their every breath. If God stopped caring for me for even a second, I wouldn't be able to exist. I would be dead. I am dependent on God for everything, even the smallest little details of my life. This is something that many Christians forget far too easily. If you're ever having a season of life where you aren't praying regularly, you need to realize that is a great sin that you should turn from immediately. And not simply because you're not keeping up with a spiritual discipline to check the box on your Christian to-do list, but because with your actions, you're saying you're not dependent on God. And if I'm being completely transparent, I've been there. I think pretty much every Christian at one point or another can say that they've been there. But if you ever find yourself in that situation, in that season of life, you should ask God for forgiveness because we are totally and completely dependent on God for everything. Paul knew that very well. He knew that he and the Ephesians were completely dependent on God. So he prayed with reverent dependence. The third form of reverence that Paul demonstrates is pray with reverent gratitude. Pray with reverent gratitude. Paul starts verse 14 by saying, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father. He's referring to what was written before this passage and what he's been talking about throughout his entire letter to the Ephesians. He wrote to them about salvation by grace through faith. He wrote about how all who believe are one in Christ. And he wrote about the wondrous mystery of the gospel in their lives. He's saying that because of all these things, he prays to the Father. Paul is deeply grateful for the things that God has done for him and also for the Ephesians. This motivates Paul to pray, and it fuels his reverence and awe when he is before God, knowing that there's nothing he can do to repay God for his goodness, but he can absolutely show his gratitude through reverence. We should follow this example in our lives. We should be grateful for all that God has done for us and for all that we know he will do for us. This should fuel us to pray with a deeper reverence and love for God. So let's be a people who pray with complete reverence when we approach our God. The second example of faithful prayer that we see in the text is this. Pray that God would strengthen your soul. Pray that God would strengthen your soul. We live in a culture that prioritizes perfecting the outer image. We have photoshopped models on every magazine and in every clothing store. Studies have been done on the most appealing positions of the hands on a wristwatch so that companies could set the watch at the exact position when advertising. We even have food companies that spend thousands and thousands of dollars getting the perfect shot with just the right angle and lighting of a burger and fries combo, with the soda being poured into a tall glass filled with ice. This is very prevalent in our culture. Or even for us personally, you know, we want to show the world that we have the perfect job or the perfect house or the perfect family, and we post about it so that everyone can see we want them to see how happy we are and how great our lives are. 
the temptation in our culture is to put way too much emphasis on outward appearance while not really caring too much about the inner being. If you think about it from an eternal perspective, it just doesn't really make much sense. Like, why would I spend so much of my time and effort and energy on my outward appearance and the way my life looks if I didn't take care of my soul? which can dictate and shape my eternity. It's like someone who washes and polishes his car every single day while his engine is rusting, yet he never checks under the hood. You should worry about the condition of your soul more than you worry about outward appearances. This is what Paul is getting at in verses 16 through 19. He's focusing on the inner beings of the Ephesians, And there's two major components of strength that he prays for in these verses that apply to us as well. The first is this. Pray that God would strengthen your soul with his power. Pray that God would strengthen your soul with his power. We see this in in verse 16. Paul says that God may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. This power that Paul is talking about is the source of strength that we receive from God in order to live this Christian life here on earth. But because of the fact that this isn't tangible, it can lead to a lot of misconceptions. Paul isn't saying that God gives us his power so that we can be like God. We will never have even a fraction of God's power in and of ourselves. What this is referring to is the mystery of God within us. God is not simply giving us his power so that we can be superhumans. God is giving us himself. This is the mystery and the wonder of the Holy Spirit inside of us. Through faith in Jesus, the Holy Spirit makes a home in your heart and gives you power, not as a transfer of power, but as the source of power himself, God. That's why Paul says that we may be strengthened with power through his spirit in our inner being. The power is God himself. We have no power apart from God. This is such a gift to us, and it's something that we all desperately need. We need this in our inner being in order to be able to fight sin. If you turn back one page in your Bible, you'll see in Ephesians 2, 3, that without God's power, All of us are guided by our sin and we're by nature children of wrath. The power of God in our inner being helps us fight against sin. It is our strength to run away from temptation and to run into the arms of God. It's also the strength of our obedience in living out the Great Commission. Through his power, we can have the courage to stand firm in the truths of the gospel, and proclaim the name of God wherever we go. You can have the courage to share your faith with your coworker or with your friend who's never fully heard the gospel. And through his power in our inner being, we are able to understand the fullness of God's love, which leads to the second component of strength we should pray for. Pray that God would strengthen your soul with his love. Pray that God would strengthen your soul with his love. I love the way verses 18 and 19 say it. It says, that you may have strength to comprehend what is the breadth and length and height and depth of God's love and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. This is so beautiful to me. And this is something we should all pray for. We should pray that God, through his power, would give us strength to comprehend the fullness of his love. Look at the language Paul uses here, the breadth and length and height and depth of God's love. God's love is so vast, so much so that Paul says that the love of Christ actually surpasses knowledge. We will never be able to fully grasp God's love for us. 
but we should strive to know it as much as we can. This is why it's so important that we pray for this, that we pray that we would be able to comprehend the amazing love of God because it's only through his power that we are able to understand any of this. So pray that God would strengthen your soul with his power and with his love. The third example of faithful prayer that we see through this passage is this. Pray with great confidence. Pray with great confidence. At the end of Paul's prayer in verses 20 through 21, he shows his confidence in that he says, now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Paul is so confident in his prayer. And we should imitate this. We should be very confident when we pray to God because we know who we're praying to. There are three truths that stand out when reading the end of Paul's prayer. And these three truths are what drives his confidence. The first is this. God can do the impossible. God can do the impossible. Verse 20 makes it clear. Paul says, God is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think. This couldn't be more true. But the sad reality is sometimes people have the temptation of limiting God by their own standards. If they don't believe that it's possible, they won't ask God for it. Or sometimes it's not even the fact that they don't believe God can do it, but that they don't believe he will do it. But before some people start going down the wrong path in their minds, I'm not alluding to a false doctrine where God gives you every single thing that you ask for. I'm not preaching a name it and claim it gospel. The Bible does not teach that, not even close. What I am saying is that we shouldn't put limitations on God. We should believe that God truly can do the impossible. And if we pray according to his will, we should pray big, believing that nothing is too hard for God. This doesn't necessarily mean that our prayers will be answered 100% of the time in the exact way that we expect them to be. The plans of God are very complex. We cannot fully understand why he does all that he does, but we should trust that his ways are best. This is why we should align our hearts with his and pray that his will be done, even if this might not look exactly like what we want it to. Knowing this means we should pray boldly. We should pray that the gospel reaches all nations and all people groups. We should pray that the Bible will be translated into all languages for people to have access to his word. We should pray for the salvation of our family members and our loved ones. And we should pray for our own hearts, which, which leads to the second truth that drives Paul's confidence. God can transform your heart. God can transform your heart. In verse 20, Paul writes to the Ephesians that God power is at work within them. This goes back to what we were just looking at praying that God would strengthen your soul. But it also goes back to what we talked about last week. It is truly impossible for our hearts to treasure God above all else without God's power at work within us. But here Paul says that God's power is at work within us. If you are in Christ, that should give you great confidence. We should truly be encouraged by the fact that God's power is at work within us. This is the power that strengthens our soul and allows us to comprehend and experience the fullness of God's love. And when this happens, it fuels us to be able to treasure God in our hearts above all else. There's a transformation that happens. God transforms and renews our hearts to be more aligned with his. He does this for our good and so that his name will be glorified forever. 
which leads to the third truth that drives Paul's confidence. God will glorify his name. God will glorify his name. Paul ends his prayer by saying, to God be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Paul knows that the chief end of all his prayers and all of the outcomes of prayer is that God be glorified forever and ever. This should be your heart when you pray. God, may you be glorified. We pray for things like obedience and spiritual strength and understanding, also that our hearts can glorify God. We don't ask for these things so that we can become better versions of ourselves. We ask for these things because we want to make much of God in our hearts and in our lives. And we can be completely confident that God will glorify his name. Jesus said in Luke 19.40 that even if man was silent, the very stones would cry out and glorify the name of God. God will glorify his name. Whether in your life or not, he will. This should give us great confidence in our prayers because we know that if we pray according to his will, he will glorify his name in our hearts and in our lives. So we pray with great confidence. This passage teaches us so many great principles and examples of faithful prayer to follow. We've seen that we should pray with reverence and that God would strengthen our souls and to do so with great confidence. I hope that this passage has spoken to you this morning. I pray that it would edify you and remind you of how to pray faithfully. But more than just learning about it, I pray that you've been motivated this morning. I pray that 2021 would truly be a year of faithful prayer in your life. Now, sometimes we can hear all of this and be motivated to pray fervently for ourselves, but let's not forget that this entire passage, Paul was praying for the Ephesians. So yes, we should absolutely pray for these things in our own lives, but we should also pray for others. We should pray big and trust that God is all-powerful. Pray for your family members. Pray for our church members and our leaders. Pray for our nation and our government. Pray for missionaries and believers across the globe. Pray with boldness and confidence, knowing that God is sovereign over everything. My sincere hope is that this would be a year of faithful prayer for you and that you would treasure God in your heart above all else. Let's pray. God, you are so good. You are holy. You are the king of kings, the creator of this universe. So yes, we come before you with reverence, acknowledging our place, acknowledging that you are our creator and we are the creation. But we're also thankful that we can come to you with confidence and call you Abba, call you our Father, and to do so with confidence because we know that we have been adopted as sons through Jesus by the work of the Holy Spirit. This is an amazing truth, God. And I pray that this would be so for our church and for all those who are watching our live stream this morning. I pray that 2021 would truly be a year of faithful prayer, that your people, God, would depend on you through prayer and that with our actions we would demonstrate that that we would recognize in our hearts and demonstrate with our actions that we truly need you for every single little thing every single day of this year that's going to come we truly do need you god and we acknowledge that so we thank you for all that you've done and we praise you for all that you will do and we pray this all in jesus name amen We're going to enter into a time of response and just kind of processing everything we've just learned from Scripture and, and through Emilio. If you need this time to just sit and pray,
or just to think, take this time to do that. But if not, and, and you're ready, uh, we invite you to sing with us, and let's sing in response to what we've heard. fail and loss surrounds my soul is weak but Christ is strong and so to him I leave it all for he who holds all things can bear each care Fast is the love of Jesus. He hears my cry. He's faithful. I lay it all on Jesus. him with humility.
Amen. Thanks, guys. That was awesome. Thank you guys so much for tuning in this morning. It has truly been awesome worshiping together this morning. Uh, just got a few announcements before we end our time together. Uh, if God is working in your heart or if you have any spiritual need, we want to hear from you. Please fill out a digital connection card that you'll find in the link below, um, and someone from our team will touch base with you. The other thing is, uh, if you want to participate in this morning's offering, uh, you can give online. You just click on the link below in the description or simply go to millcitychurch.net slash give, and you can give your gifts there. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in. It has been awesome. Until next Sunday, Mill City, you are sent. Have a great week.